Holy Spirit, we welcome you as the honored guest in this house today. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your leadership over this service. We didn't come to hear from men. We didn't come to hear from women. We came to hear from the Spirit of the living God. Yeah. We press in for your heart, Papa, to bless you, to worship you, to honor you, to glorify and exalt your mighty name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's just be still in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we anoint our sister this morning with a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost. We pray, Lord, your spirit come upon her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet and shake every fiber of her being for your glory. That you draw out of her innermost being, God, that which is needful for this body. As we sense this is a time for you to speak to us. We receive this, your gift, and Edgar as well. But God, I pray that when she leaves this house, she leaves changed. That she takes a deposit from what you're doing here with her wherever she goes. That you connect us together by your spirit in accordance with your plan and your purpose, not ours. And we bless you and we receive and we thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Shh. Whoa. <laughs> uh-huh. I get a witness on the shoe. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, you may not feel it, but I do. While I'm ministering and just letting God do what he wants to do, there's just like this cool, refreshing drink of water that's just flowing through my body. I feel it. It's like interior air conditioning. You know, sometimes you feel the heat, the fire of God. Well, this is like a cool, refreshing presence. And the word of God says in Acts, it says that you may receive times of refreshing. Whoa! From the presence of God. That's all right, honey. I only walk on the bottoms. So, God, we thank you. We receive everything you have for us. Make a wreck of this place. And all of these people, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Indira, you're up. That's how we roll in here. I should have warned you, but sneak attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I take your liberty to do something? Yes, you guys are up. Okay. I'm... I want to bless the house. We bless Yes, God. Come on up here. 
Yeah, you're coming up here. You're too short. The people in the back can't see you. They can barely see you over the dashboard. I got a true story about being short. Amen. Hey. Excuse my. Let me get you a water. That, uh, Edgar has one right there. Thank you, Lord. So many, many, many years ago, um, well, I think they had originally measured me at five feet. Okay, so I have to ask you, these lights, they flicker on occasion. Is that normal? Okay. So I've been, no, but seriously, I have been in meetings when the presence of God shows up, there's like a charge of electricity. In both meetings I've attended and both meetings I've done. So when the Holy Spirit shows up, hey, do your thing. Oh. <clears throat> so many years ago, I, when they first measured me, they said I was five feet tall. I said, God, can I, can I have two more inches? You know, that poverty mindset, two inches. And I asked for two inches. I prayed that for years. So one day, um, we were doing insurance, you know, and the guy came over and he put down stats and he measured me. He says, how tall are you? I said, maybe about five, four, eleven. He measured me. He looked at me. He measured me again. He said, how tall are you? I said, well, five, four. 4'11", hopefully it's not 4'10". <laughs> he says, lady, you've been shortchanging yourself. You are actually 5'2". So in retrospect, I could have asked for 5'4", or 5'5". <laughs> I'm still contending for that. But, it, but you know, God knows our heart. He made me short, but he gave me a big mouth. And a big heart, indeed, his heart. So I would like to um, say how much I love Pastor Jean and Cheryl and my beautiful friend Sally. I love this church, the presence of God. Oh, the presence of God, you cultivate it, he loves it. I mean, it's like love bubbles blowing all around. So hopefully I can finish what we started. How many people were at uh, Ruth? What's her last name? LaBeouf? Trumbull. <laughs> Excellent. And how many people were here yesterday? Wonderful. So I'm going to do a small recap and just continue on with the prophetic. One of the things in the prophetic, who likes to doodle here? You just like to draw it. Excellent. So when the service is going on, or a song is being played. If you ever tempted to take out your book and start drawing, start drawing. Because what happens is the Lord opens your eyes, your senses, and shows you what's actually happening in the spirit. So I, um, I have, honey, could you give me that blue book in my bag? It's a notebook right there. That's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to, hopefully you can see it. Um, yes, that'd be great. So here it is. The service was going on. Not this service. But can you see that? Okay, so it's an angel that was blowing a shofar over the world. You know? So in the spirit, when I see that, I'm like, whoa. But then I start praying, Lord. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let the sound of the Lord be released. Yeah. Another time, I saw this. Can you see that? These are vessels being poured in a bowl that's tipping over. And on the bottom part, yeah, this is the picture. The bottom part were the people receiving from heaven. But they were also praying and their prayers were being collected. The word says that our prayers are being collected. And at some point, that bowl is going to tip. Oh, I'm ready for the tipping, aren't you? Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to show you one more picture. And the only reason I'm showing you these things is because 
that is one of the ways that the prophetic works. So now, this one's a little interesting. <laughs> Has another angel, and he's carrying a bowl of fruit. But on the fruit, what's being poured down is fire. We are ministers of fire. But when the angel of the Lord shows up and brings this, there is a double portion and more. I believe God wants to, this church is already really activated, but some, some of you, God wants to take you to another level. Why not all of us? Amen. Amen. So here, I saw a door being opened in heaven. And then there was a heart there. So God's heart is being opened. Even right now, you know, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open it, I will come in. And I will sup with you. I will eat with you. I believe that's what God's doing right now. He's opening. He has opened the door. He's going to be knocking on the doors of your heart to hear what he has to say. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I started telling Pastor Jean yesterday and Cheryl about some things that the Lord showed me for this place. In the spirit, it, it, it is called radical change. But in the spirit, it's like a ball of fire. And I have seen, in conjunction with a few other prophets, right? Other people. Lines of people coming in here. But I want to tell you who actually goes, like this is your church church. Beautiful. Awesome. Here's what's happening. God's developing a core muscle. Under there, Pastor Jean and Cheryl, what God's doing is he's training you how to get ready for when those people come, they will be taken care of. Some of them are going to become bloody and wounded. Some of them are going to be coming with our arms and legs in the spirit. Maybe, maybe the natural, I didn't see that. But they're going to be coming really messed up. And before I go any further, I'd like to make an apology. As a leader, as a pastor, I want to say to all of you, please forgive me. I'm representing leaders and pastors and bosses and maybe family members who've had authority over you. Please forgive me for abusing you, taking you for granted, and just not treating you right. Thank you. So close your eyes for a minute. I see oil falling. Father, I just thank you for your oil of your presence. Even now, God. Thank you for washing. Cleansing, oh God. Woo! Let me take a deep breath. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can open your eyes now. Thank you, Father. You know that song you were singing, As For Me In My House. We, when we started driving, the Lord had put that on my heart, and I kept singing that the whole way here, uh, by John Waller. And, um, you know, what's the name of that movie? Um, there was a movie made for guys about a firefighter, and that particular song was the song used. Thank you, Lord. I'm not that special, but I'm special to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I do have a few words of knowledge that the Lord asked me to give. I have words of healing. But before we go any further, I want to declare something over this home that Father said to do. How many people here can blow a shofar? One, two, three. Okay, so you got my shofar and they got change. Do you have, how many shofars do you have? Just one. Okay, would you come up and would Pastor Jean and Cheryl stand right there? He's back there. The white shirt. Yep. Yeah. Tell me your name. Dave. 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 <laughs> Would you 
take either my shofar or their shofar. It doesn't matter which one. By the way, there's all kinds of manifestations the Lord does when he wants to. So my shofar, as a matter of fact, it went on to your shofar too. There's oil. Sometimes I get oil in my hands. Sometimes if he feels like it, he'll have all color dust, gold, green, pink. This morning I woke up and I had some up here and some here. I call them God kisses. It's just like, baby, you're doing okay. <laughs> I, you know, um, sometimes I get it in my mouth and I know I have to speak. It's a language, you know, you, as, you, as you develop your, your relationship with Father, he will show you things that you need to do. Sometimes he even drops jewelry. You know, I have a gemstone from heaven. My son has a diamond. Edgar, as a matter of fact, had gotten a gold tooth many years ago. I believe, and the Lord, I believe because the Lord told me, I'm going to do those things again. Let me ask you a question. What do prophets produce? More prophets. All our children are, are very prophetic. And they're very much in the prophetic line. And guess what? So are their children. So my, uh, one of my granddaughters, I, you, you know, I take them to a lot of prayer meetings, and I heard her laughing. I mean, she was really laughing. So I got up and I went to see what was happening. And falling from the sky was all these feathers. I mean, it was all kinds of feathers. And I've seen feathers fall before, but this was very different. You know, why am I saying this? Get ready. You know, when the gold dust started coming years ago, I asked the Lord, why are you doing this? Because everything God does is purposeful, yeah. is intentional. It's because he loves you. Amen. So I said, Father, why are you doing this? He said, so the world will know I exist. We got the benefit of it. But that so the world would know that he really exists. Come on. Well, to me, that made sense, you know. It, it wasn't just like, oh my, I just want to throw some glitter around. But don't ever take it for granted. So when we were coming here, I told Cheryl, I reached in my purse and I pulled out a, a shirt, clean shirt I had just thrown in the bag, you know, and, and all this gold went all over the place. It was so much, I was, I was, I went, whoa. But <laughs> it was all over the car, all over the place. I went, okay, Lord, I receive it. Cleanse me, yes, amen. Cleanse me, cleanse me and purify me like fine gold. Now, I've been to heaven many times. And one of the times I went there, I was like a little girl. I had two little piggy tails. I was dressed in this beautiful white gown. I was holding Jesus' hand, and we were walking on the streets of gold. And it really is like translucent grass. And on each side, it was like you're walking down a runway. There were people and they were just bowing down before him and they were also dressed in white. I have all these counters and half the time I don't know what they mean, but I've been having them for a long time. But I get to share those wonderful stories with you that heaven exists. So what we like to do now is have Eddie, I got it right? Hallelujah. I like him. Oh yes, Lord, thank you. Where's that other delete? Use that guys. Yes, we like, I like to put, the, no, no, use Edgar's. So I like to sing while I'm talking, you know. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's the one. Put it over a uh, Cheryl and put it over Jean. Thank you, Lord. Cover them totally, man. You know, these are what you call prophetic acts. <laughs> Somebody help him out. Eddie, walk over and help him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So we did this, was it yesterday? And uh, one of the other couples, we had a renewal of vows. I, I have to say, I do love how uh, Jean does the marriage thing. Do you take you? Yes. Do you take you? Yes. I love it. 
cut, you cut through all the red tape. For the Lord would say to you, I am releasing a new sound. For out of your bellies will flow rivers, rivers, rivers of living water. There is a sound that's going to come from this valley that's going to crescendo throughout the nation. And I will bring those from the highway and the byways to you. Oh, my son and my daughter, how pleased I am with you. And even now, as you hear the sound of the shofar, as you hear the heart of Adonai, watch and see. Watch and see. So now I want you to blow it over them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your angels that are here. And we thank you, Lord, for the dispatch of fresh angels. We ask you, oh God, for the elite angels. Now, I've seen those. Let me tell you, they're beautiful, but they're so fierce. I thank you, Father, for your link angels around this property. I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're doing. Could you blow it on their feet? Uh, no, on their feet. This is all about them right now. Now, would you, go, would you go behind them? Thank you. We declare blessed are the feet that brings the good news to the poor. Hakarabasante. Blow it on their backs. But the Lord would say to you, I am your rear guard. I am your rear guard your back Amen. I know you know that but I'm telling you I got your back thank you Lord I even see military angels coming here thank you Lord there are some there's some scout angels <laughs> that came out and they said yes it's a good place to come to thank you Lord amen amen you could put the you could hold on I'll do what you want with the show for her. How do you feel? <laughs> See, this is what it's all about. Amen. But you see what's on the two of them? It oozes on to everybody else. You know, because it's like the mom and dad of the home. Remember I said, what do prophets produce? We produce prophets. Teachers produce teachers. So the Lord had me made this oil for you. Yes, but it's also for your church. I could get it. And what you're going to do, and we talked about this, is God's going to release through them prophets, kings, and priests. I've thought many times while I was sitting there about the Good Samaritan. You are the good Samaritan because the wounded is coming to you, but you're going to take care of them and release them. So I want to tell you, don't be dismayed if you see this place ebb and flow. Gets bigger, gets smaller. The purpose of this place is to create prophets, kings, and priests. And then when he's finished, they will send them out. And then the next batch will come in. Because you see, Jean, yes, you had a school one time, but you're about to get into another school. You're about to start a whole new thing because what was still is, if that makes any sense to you. I could see the Spirit of God moving in your belly. He says, I have much to say. And this is almost as if Jean was with the Holy Spirit, with the book, and his notes and the Holy Spirit had a red pen and he was like editing editing your notes editing 
what he wanted to be told. Because we're in a new season. Same spirit, new season. And he's going to, immense wisdom is going to be poured into you to do the next session of teaching. Oh! Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, you can sit down. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. You guys remember that song? I want to tell you a few stories because I like to tell stories. It's who I am. It's testimonies and things in my life. And I hopefully it'll encourage you. But I have a declaration to declare over this place now. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. It's upon this place. Because the Lord has anointed this place to preach good news to the poor. He has sent you guys to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison of those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to preserve those who mourn in Zion, and to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness. Now, I know you got three cherry trees out there. I think it's cherry. Trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. You will build up the old ruins. What is the old ruins? People who have been broken and, wound and wounded and felt like they don't belong anywhere. <sighs> they belong here. They shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flock. So I, I actually saw people sewing into here that you didn't even know about. And they weren't necessarily part of the ministry. They just wanted to be part of the blessing. So we thank you for that. You know, it's a big world and there are many things going on. And there are many people, that's what they do. That's their ministry. They sow and sow. And that's their 1%. You remember the story about the three talents? The five, was it five, two, and one? Yeah. The guy with the one, you know, he didn't even, he didn't invest it. He buried it on the ground because he said, I know you are a hard man. But some people, they're 1%. They're investing it in the kingdom of God. Because they know they can't do what they're doing. What you're going to do. But they want to help. So Father, we thank you for those helpers. Yeah. The ones that you've called to sow into this place. And that you would bless them exceedingly, abundantly, above all they can hope or ask or think. Thank you, Lord. And the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Um, I do know that I, I feel that God's going to be sending people to help. I, it's like a manual type of help, you know, so that you don't have to do it yourself, but you will train them to do it your way. So we receive that. Amen? Amen. It's a lot of work. You know, I, I make prophetic oils and I do personal prophetic oils and I sell oils. But I, I, I told Sally, when I'm doing this, I, I don't want to talk about that. This is different. So when he has to do something for the Lord, he needs that time. So we, guess what? He needs help with other things. And so does Cheryl. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. But you shall be named priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the nations 
and in their glory you will boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Instead of humiliation, you will rejoice in your portion. Therefore, in their land, in this land, you will possess a double portion. Everlasting joy will be yours. And then the Lord goes on to say why he's doing this. He said, for I, the Lord, love justice. In May of this year, sometimes the Lord will give me like a one word for each month, you know. He said, June would be, no, May would be a marvelous May. May, marvelous month of miracles. Now, I did see some personal miracles, but this country saw some too. Yeah, then he said June would be Justice June. Do we see justice in June? Yeah. Woohoo! We got a portion. America, the land that we love, got a pass from heaven because the Supreme Court decided we're going we're we're to turn this over and we have nothing to do with this. This is the supreme law of the land. Yes, they did send it back to the state. But guess what? Prayer changes things. Don't. Thank you, Lord. Remember, I only asked for two inches. I could have gotten more. Prayer changes things. fervently pray but when you pray thank the lord he said with prayers and thanksgiving make your requests be known unto the lord at some point when you're praying the lord says stop start thanking me thank you lord i thank you lord each of these states right now in the name of jesus will do what is right in your eyes if there's anybody in leadership that does not belong there that will do what is right in your eyes either they change or you change them out Shape up or ship out. Because this country belongs to God. America chose God. She chose him. Oh, how wonderful that is. Thank you, Lord. We're still choosing him. The Lord says, I hate robbery in the burnt offerings. And I will faithfully give them their recompense and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations. Your generational blessings with your children and your children's children is going to be known among the nations. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them because they are the descendants whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul joyfully in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. A bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Let me tell you about Indian weddings. You know, it, there's a story in the parables that talks about a wedding where the, uh, the, the, the father of the groom sent out clothes to everybody. And some guy showed up and he didn't look like everybody else. He tried to crash the party. In the Indian culture, the father of the groom would send out specific clothing for those who has been invited to his son's wedding. Beautiful clothes so when they come they're like oh well yeah you're here because you're invited that was their invitation so we are dressed in the robes of righteousness from father so if somebody else shows up and they don't belong here like what you doing here what's your intention you had to get saved healed and delivered or you get out God give us eyes to see the ones who come who have a different intention. So this is the culture. God dresses us. When you go any place that you go, the spiritual realm know who you are. And the more time you spend with Father God in his word, in worship, in prayer, in waiting on God, 
And I would add, take a notebook and a pen, write down, withdraw, write down, whatever he gives you. The more time you spend like Jesus, guess what? You look like him. Do you remember when Jesus was walking around, the demons would say, what are you doing here? Why did you come? It's not, you know, it's not a, why are you tormenting us? Because you see, when the Son of Man, which is Messiah Yeshua, showed up, they knew, oh my God, he could send me to hell. He could take me out. And he said, shh, don't tell anybody. How could you not tell somebody I was blind and now I see? You didn't need to. I could see. How could you not say I was lame and now I can walk? I can walk. Here right now have pains in your legs please put your hands up thank you lord thank you father <clears throat> that's one of the words of knowledge father i just thank you in the name of jesus for your healing presence lord i ask that if there's a pinched nerve one of you have a one or two of you <clears throat> the pinched nerve we command it to be unpinched we say relax muscle in the name of jesus lord i thank you for regeneration of the bones and the muscles and the joints I speak to arthritis and tell you, get out and take all your friends with you in the name of Jesus. And I declare you every bit whole and healed. Thank you, Lord. That was one of the words um, I had from the Lord about that. Thank you, Father. For as the earth brings forth her buds and the garden causes things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness and peace to spring forth before the nations. So you know you're called to the nations. There's no doubt about that. But there's seasons and times. So sometimes when I get a prophetic word or I see something in my mind's eye, I do see open visions. If God wants to do it that way, he does it that way. But I pay attention to the colors. Each season, let's pick the color green. Each season has a different type of green. So this is how you grow in the prophetic. Well, what green is it? He talks about spring. Well, that's a season and a time. Is it this spring? Well, spring is gone. Is it next spring? So learn to ask the Lord, oh, it's a beautiful green, spring green. Well, which spring is it? And if he doesn't tell you, just know it's going to happen in the spring. Whichever spring he picks. Hallelujah. Don't get discouraged when you think something didn't come to pass. Do you know King Josiah, who was the youngest king ever, was prophesied to be king 300 years before he was king? How, oh, guess what they must have called that guy who prophesied that? You're a false prophet. Come on. 300 years. How about this one? Who knows the first prophetic word that was given? very first one the garden of eden god tell eve you know he would bruise your heel but you would crush his head how you like that for a prophetic word many 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 years later it came to pass so what are the promises god has told you oh yes thank you father let's do this right now please raise your hands Father God, in the name of Jesus, I break off any false prophetic words, any false mantles been put on your children. In the name of Jesus, that was spoken out of soulish mind thinking, just being in the atmosphere at the wrong place at the wrong time. Thank you, Lord. Everybody just take a deep breath. So let it go. Establish God, the ones that you have put on them to carry and walk with the yoke that is easy and the burden that is light. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's talk about the women now in the wedding, in the Indian weddings. So we would wear a sari. A sari is 10 yards of material. And it's wrapped. It can, it can be wrapped several different ways. And they go through different colors. I think they start with yellow and then orange and then red. And it depicts the, the, the life of the, of the girl. But the very last sari is red. And it's woven with 14 karat gold thread. So if humans can do that, what is Abba doing for us? All 
he asks is yield. Let me do it through you. If you could see yourself in the spirit, how beautiful you look, it's amazing. God is coming for his bride. Jesus is coming for his bride. Hallelujah. So now, also in the Indian culture, when a man is engaged to a woman, they don't get married right away. He takes his son and he helps him build his house for this woman he's going to bring. And then the father inspects the house to make sure every single thing is working and just right for her. He watches over his son to make sure he did it right. Well, Jesus already did it right. He died on the cross at Calvary and he rose again. And he's sitting at the right hand of the father right now, even right now, interceding for us. So his beautiful bride could come to his house. When the time is right, the trumpet sounds. And they, oh, the bridegroom's coming. In the Indian culture, here's what happens. He comes on a white horse. Literally, they get a white horse. He's dressed in this gorgeous, gorgeous turban with gold and white and sometimes pink and, you know, a long shirt. And he looks like a king. But he comes on a white horse for his bride. I want to tell you, Jesus loves his bride. And he's coming for his bride. Don't ever look at the majority because he's always a, rem a remnant. I've always been the one. If the crowd's going that way, I'm going the other way. <laughs> I'm just this way I'm built, you know. I'm, I always think, well, some must be going. Something's not right if they're all going that way, you know. <laughs> I, I think that's part of that prophetic thing in me. Prof you know, we always examine everything. It's like, why, you know. But Jesus loves his bride, and you are his bride, and he loves you. But guess what? Another story. One day I was fuming, and I was fussing. I don't know what happened. I don't know who told me what, but I was upset. So I'm walking up the stairs in my house. I'm going, you know, I don't know why I should be so upset. I mean, who do I think I am anyway? And the Holy Spirit says to me, well, you're the daughter of the king. Well, you're the daughter of the king. You're the son of the king. It didn't matter what you were doing. It didn't matter what you were fussing about. It didn't matter if you ran in mud and you were all nasty looking or whatever. You are always the son and the daughter of the king. I hope I'm really helping someone because God really wants you to know who you are. Your royalty. And the Queen of England and all that beautiful stuff they have going on is nothing compared to how Papa dresses you. So let me tell you how you approach the king. Now, this actually happened to me in prayer. I'm praying, everybody's in, I'm soaking in the Lord, and all of a sudden, boom, I'm there. I'm in heaven. I, the first thing I encountered was a large wardrobe and an angel of the Lord was standing there. Now, this is scripture. Some of it, you find it in Zechariah. You know, when he told Joshua, to, you know, angel to change Joshua's clothes. But I wasn't Joshua, it was me. So I get to this spot and here's this beautiful wardrobe. And the angel of the Lord opened the door. And he said, you need to change your clothes. So I wasn't coming the way I was dressed. We have to come a certain way when we come before the king. So he handed me this beautiful pastel blue dress. And when your hand touched it, it was like water going through your fingers. It was so soft. And it had all the colors of the rainbow and more. And all of a sudden, I had it on. And then I thought, oh, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. I was going in the way I am in such a way that I got, I had my list. Well, God, you know, I need this. And so-and-so did that. I had this thing going on. And he said, no, you come in this way. Allow the Lord to change your clothes. 
Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Come into his courts with praise. Because you see all those things, they're already taken care of. He just want to spend time with you. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. The Lord said he was going to be releasing joy in this place today. Well, it's more than that. This is more. Why settle for last Sunday? Every day. His mercies are new every morning. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you another story. I'm reading the book of Matthew. Man, I have a lot of encounters in the book of Matthew. And all of a sudden, I'm in the book of Matthew. And the town I was in, they were all whispering, Yeshua is coming. Jesus is coming. Yeshua is coming. They were so excited that Jesus was coming. All the children were coming. The people were coming. They were quickly grabbing everybody who was sick because Jesus was coming. Do we get excited? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Jesus is coming. He is here. He said, "Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. But what overwhelmed me was the love he had, they had for him. And what overwhelmed me was the love he had for them. The first fruit of the Spirit is love. Who is love? God is love. Jesus is love. I mean, it, it was love that took him to the cross. And then speaking of the cross, another day I'm reading Matthew again. And the Lord says to me, I mean, it doesn't matter what I'm reading. You know, he's got his own thoughts. He'll interrupt your reading. And he said, you know, you know, People say by my stripes that they healed. But they don't know what they're saying. Let me show you what it means. And guess what happened next? I was in the garden of Gethsemane. I'm watching this. So he took me back in time. I saw the sweat. The blood was dripping off of him because he was in such anguish. I saw when they dragged him off. I saw when they ripped his clothes off. And the first whip came down. Let me tell you. His flesh opened up. They hit him so hard because you have to remember, they were demonically charged. The whip went right through his skin, opened up the flesh down to the bone. Never said a word. But remember, I'm watching this encounter. And the Lord says to me, by that, you're healed. I watch when they slapped him and they pulled the beard out. And he goes, by that, you're healed. It was, it was, I have no words. I watch when they put the crown of thorns on his head. You have to think about this logically. For something to go through your skull, just think of how hard they jammed that down. Let's talk about your mind right now. We wear the helmet of salvation. But right now, there are some people, your mind is so much is going on there. There's so many concerns. And the Lord wants you to know, shalom, be at peace. Be at peace. I have this under control. Do not worry. All is well. So they jammed this thing down. And I've seen, when I was in Israel, I actually saw that tree. It is really thorny. So, I mean, the guy putting it together, it, he probably got really hurt. But the force in which it went down on top of him. But he didn't say a word. And there's blood dripping. And it went right through his bone. And he says, by that. You are healed. Then we moved on a little bit. And he says, right now we have cars. 
This is inter you know, the Lord talks to you just the way, right where you're at. He says, we have cars, you know, we can go from one point to the next really quickly. But they had to walk every place they went. And his back is all bruised and opened up. And not bruised is the wrong word. He's busted up, man. They messed him up, you know. They, it's like you take some guy out in the alley and you just tell him who he is. It was bad. So he said, the Lord said to me, my back at that point, you know, the, the way the human body is made, it'll kind of start making scabs. He's got an open wound. And they took this heavy robe that he wore and threw it on top of him. How did you think that felt? Open wound. He said, by that, you're healed. And then they ripped it off. And when they pulled it off, they pulled more skin off. By that, you're healed. And then came the other parts that you know. The nails in his hands and his feet. And then to top it off, they stabbed him in the side. Do you know why water and blood came out? I'll tell you why. She said, uh-uh. <laughs> when a person experiences cardiac arrest, a lot of times that happens. Now, whether the Lord experienced cardiac arrest or not, I don't know, but that's what happens. Their heart, their heart seized. By that, we are healed. So don't, don't ever think that the Lord doesn't love you he took it all I would encourage you to do a word study on all those different parts and see what it what it means in your own life so he was thirsty and you know they gave him vinegar mixed with gall in it was more than gall it was um, say it again painkillers but it's another name cannabis and he refused it. So honestly, he refused the weed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father, that you are so good. How about another story? This one happened recently. Well, I think I told the story about the fish, the talking fish. I'll tell you two more. Edgar was on a mission trip to India, and I, got very, I was very ill. I think I had pneumonia. And we had a snowstorm in Charlotte. Everything was snowed in. And I wasn't getting better. I had a dream three nights in a row. And in this dream, I'm up in heaven, and there's this table set with this beautiful bowl. I was, um, I was so admiring the bowl. It was like an iridescent pearl, giant bowl. And in the bowl was fruits. And the Lord said, you need to eat the fruit. It'll make you well. And okay, I started eating the fruit. And this happened three nights in a row. The third night, I was well. You know, God knows what you need when you need it. By his stripes, we are healed. You know, but sometimes in prayer, even manna shows up, Jean. We've seen manna show up. We've seen leaves come. What do leaves come for? The healing of the nations. God wants to be generous whenever he wants to be generous. So we said, be generous all the time. So recently now, I was... Uh, once again, you know, is Father, you know, what's going on? How are you doing? What's happening in heaven? I love you, Jesus. I thank you, God. You're just so good. You're so kind. Thank you, Father. I just took a nice deep breath. I laid back and I got quiet. But this time, the Lord took me to when he was making Adam. Father God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were like three little boys. And Adam was a bunch of Legos. They were laughing. They were so excited that they were going to make man in their image. 
So one of them said, oh, we could put an artery here. If we put an artery here, then it could connect to this vein, and it could do this and this. And the other one said, ha, 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 that is so good. Oh, 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 what if we put a bone there? Oh, yeah, well, we could call it a femur, a femur, yes. And the femur is attached to this bone and make the foot go like this. And they were laughing. There was such joy, such love. And all I could think about when the word says, you we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. So I was having some trouble with my gums. If you go to the dentist and he starts poking around and he goes six, seven, nine, you know you're in trouble. So my dentist says, well, you know, we have to do this and this and this to get your gums healthy. You know, your teeth seem okay, but we need to do some work. I said, okay. As moms, and I know a lot of moms can relate to this, we take care of everybody and just don't take care of ourselves. So I'm guilty of that. I was guilty of that. So I said, God, we need to talk about this. So I, there was a guy on Sid Roth who was talking about being fearfully and wonderfully made. I mean, this is true. So how do I pray for myself, God? You know you can ask God how to pray for yourself. One time he said, oh, you can pray this way. Beloved, I pray that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. He is his word. So then he told me about my gums. Declare over my gums that it is fearfully and wonderfully made. And let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Come on. There's no decay in heaven. Nobody's blind. Nobody's deaf. Nobody has bad gums. Why well, did that for about six, seven months? And I went back to the dentist. <coughs> what do you think happened? Well, he stopped poking around in my mouth. I'm hearing zero, zero, one, zero, zero. He said, Indira, did you go to another dentist? I said, well, kind of. <coughs> maybe it's that <laughs> maybe it's that Colgate total he said well your gums are 100% healthy <coughs> ask the Lord how to pray for yourself and do what he says it's really important until you see the results <coughs> thank you Lord so I do have a few word of knowledge I had listed knees, people who have pain in their knees, people who have symptoms from having COVID, which is no taste, no smell, hair falling out, different things, whatever you think it is. He, say, he just had COVID symptoms, sinus issues. He, I saw uh, people who had issues with their heart, and with their heart, it's both emotional and physical. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> um... And the Lord wants to heal that. So right where you're at, if that's you at all, you don't need anybody to lay hands on you because the King of Kings is here. Amen? So just put your hands up and say, I receive it. Thank you, Lord, for healing your children. Thank you, Father, for making what is crooked straight. Thank you, Father, for that olfactory nerves to kick right back in. They get their smell back. Lord, we, you showed me COVID is gone. I'm going to tell you, I saw a vision of that, man. He took that snake's head off. It's gone. We, we rebuke all symptoms. You and your friends and your cousins just leave in the name of Jesus. I declare over my brothers and sisters that you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. And your body will be on earth as it is in heaven. And we curse the words, oh, I'm just getting old. Well, my aunt had that, you know, my grandma had that, and my mother had that, you know, so I guess I have that. No! We break that in Jesus' name. I declare you walk in good health. 
Hallelujah. Now, you know, honestly, I can say that and I still have a headache. But guess what? Let it go in Jesus' name. If it hasn't gone, well, God, is there something else I need to do? I'm just being practical. Then I had a few interesting words of knowledge. I heard the words for someone or someones that you're going to be given an inheritance. An inheritance is coming your way. Um, and I believe it's a financial inheritance. It just came out of nowhere. Thank you, Lord. I'm trying to read my writing. Thank you, Lord. I saw, um, some, well, during worship, I saw this. I, 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 I was seeing something happening in heaven. Sometimes what would happen is I would see prayers. People are praying. And the things that they're praying for, it will fall down, you know. So I saw homes. Whoever here is praying for homes, I saw homes coming down from heaven. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for this home. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Here's a true story. I was ministering at this meeting one time when this first started to happen to me. And during the worship, I'm in heaven. And I see homes. I saw car parts. Car parts. Fenders, bumpers, doors. They were just dropping down from heaven. People were praying. I need a new fender. Here it was. But the funniest thing that night was I saw a pen that looked like a cartoon. Cartoon pen. And he was jumping up and down. He was so happy. I went, oh, you're cute. You're unusual. But I learned enough to know to be faithful for what I saw. Be faithful. Like God is the one who delivers. You have to, we have to be faithful. So I stood up and there were people praying for homes. There were all kinds of homes, let me tell you. All shapes, all sizes. Beautiful homes. Um, and then there were people who were praying for car parts. So then I have the pen, the dancing pen. I said, well, I believe there's somebody here. You're thinking about going to school. God's called you to be an illustrator. And he wants you to know that's the right decision. Because you're very good with the pen. So there was a young man that was there who was caught between two decisions. And he was going to school. And he wanted to know, should he become an illustrator? Wow. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. The other thing I saw was there's somebody, maybe more than one, you've been praying for a car. And I saw the Lord said, I'm going to give you the car. I think one of them, somebody's going to give them a car. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We receive it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We receive it. We receive that and more, Father. Whatever you want to do, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, this one is very unusual. Mm. I heard the word candle, C-A-N-D-L-E, candle. I don't know if it's somebody here looking to do a candle business or something to do with a candle, but the Lord said your wish is yours. I don't know. I just deliver. Well, were you blessed today? Are you glad that you are in the house of God? All right. Everybody's all clear. When we're all finished, we're all done. Father, we thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you for the gift that you sent us in Endura and Edgar. Lord, we bless them. And we thank you. We bless your people. We thank you for what you've done, what you're continuing to do, and what we have yet to see you do. We trust you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. And until next week, let Jesus Christ make a radical change in your life today. God bless you. There's some uh, refreshments in the back if you want to hang around.